I'm going to talk about three aspects of one subject. Um, how to read. How to read the internet. And uh, how to read YouTube. Uh, I just... Uh, these, this is 1974 book. This is the 2011 paperback of the 2010 book, Nicholas Carr, finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, nonfiction. At the end of last month, maybe it may have been uh, November 1, may have been this month, 2024. Um, I had, I learned two things. One, um, of course, they created a transcript out of every YouTube video. And most, not all people, will put a you know description of what the contents are for any given uh, video. And I was taught how to read a book and recommendations when the internet came along how to, how to read but what I was told I was shocked almost no one reads this I mean no human being and the point is the YouTube computers the software they read everything they read this description and they read the transcript so that they can show it to potential viewers and they want people to view it. They, their business model is to things that are popular, they show and they sell advertising. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not selling any advertising. People, not that many people watch my videos. One out of 200 people that they show a, uh, these are called thumbnails. So here's one of mine. It's had 21 views. It's been up 11 days. It says 11 views. It's just been up one day. And uh, varies a good deal. I'm going to ask you to start reading the description on my videos. Now you may be a first time viewer, say, ah, don't do that. It's better for your brain if you do. That's what this talks about. That's why it was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Your internet reading should include actual reading. So, How to Study in College, second edition, Walter Punk. This was a textbook. I was studying college. 1974. That's the year I graduated. And the year this became available. And what I was taught to read a book, you're a nonfiction book like this, you actually read and think about the contents. You read the preference. You read the contents. Academic setting. What did you come for to college? How to control your time. How to concentrate. How to memorize. Build a memory. Vocabulary. Improve it. Take good notes. Master your textbook. Just for that, page 140. Master your textbook. You read the preference. Now, you do this with everybody, but basically, I was taught. This was a class, Personal Development 160. Survey read 
paragraph by paragraph. Make notes. Some items you need to read and reread sentence by sentence. Review the material. It's Q3R, survey question, read, recite, review. This all works. This all works. Now, here's the thing most people don't do, which I still do. They said, uh, after you've done that, read the index. Read the index. Yes, I meant that. So you read every word in the index. What words do you not know? What people do you not know? Mark those. You take notes of the index, just like the rest of the book. Every single word in here, there's a reason why it's in here. This is where you're going. By the end of the book, if you really learn the material, you know what these words mean, every one of them, and why they're in here. Visualization, vocabulary, vocalization. J.B. Watson, who was Dr. J.B. Watson, well, you'll know. Worry, how to handle worry. All good stuff. I don't know if every school does this, but most do. Now the back cover. You're supposed to read the back cover. Making the best of your time. Getting the most out of your lectures. You're paying to be there. Themes and research papers. Speeches and oral reports. Used to be, to graduate from college, you had to give speech at some point in your academic career had to give an oral report. I had to write a lot of papers, I had to learn a foreign language, I had to learn at least some mathematics and science. Good book. WSU Bookstore. This was Wichita State University Bookstore. So, 1974. And this paperback edition, I read 2010, but 2011 paperback, uh, Nicholas Carr, The Shallows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Brains. So, what's back cover say? Silent Spring for the Literary Mind. One of the things he talks about Remember, that's published in 2010, is a fairly new, successful uh, website called Google. And he's not sure that Google will catch on and will still be there, even when the book comes out. Because he's writing the book in 2009, and... Um, I understood that perfectly well because I invested a thousand dollars in Google, but not this Google. It was called different, but it's a, the exact same uh, process. It was underfunded and did not survive, and it literally killed the um, programmer whose idea it was. I mean, the guys who did Google are not the only guys who realized what could be done with the internet and the World Wide Web. Uh, there was competition, and they would just buy up successful competitors like Excite. But, uh, yeah, my friend, I mean, he literally had a heart attack at the airport and died. He's trying to keep the business going. Here's the index. You should read the index. You're not going to do it, but I'd say you should. You read the notes in books that have notes to their chapters. And you read the uh, table of contents in books that have a table of contents. Not all of them do. 
HAL is HAL 9000 from 2001. What the brain thinks about. Church of Google. Now, uh, it's not magic, your biological entity. And when you read, if you actually work at it to learn something, you develop this in your brain. Myelin wraps around a nerve fiber so that it actually builds stronger nerve fiber so that you can retrieve whatever it is that you're studying. This is from a book published about the same time, The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. Greatness isn't born, it's grown. Here's how. Well, you have to try. Effort is how you biologically change your brain. And they didn't know this back then in 1974 when Walter Puck's book came out. But they know that now, and everything he said in here is true. You have to put effort in. So I'm asking you to read everything there is to read in a uh, YouTube video. It's better for your brain.